Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second leg of our tour to tour travel. Today I'm going to be flying. I did originally think about doing this from passenger's perspective, but I decided I would fly this uh, this leg. Um, so I am here in the Xcraft's ERJ 145XR. As you can see, it's a very nice model, and we are currently at BGGH Bravo Golf Golf Hotel, which is Nuuk Airport. Today, for this leg, we are going to be flying to Charlie Yankee Yankee Tango, which is St. John's. Uh, that is our destination. This plane is going to be perfectly adequate for that. I don't think you'd normally do a three hour flight in this plane. This is more of a spoke to hub aircraft, but um, we're doing it anyway. So, I have got everything semi prepared. Let's get rid of those. We'll leave the markings. We will close the door though. And in here, what do we need to do next? So, we need to. If I open the checklist, we need to put the APU on. So, before start checklist, that's where I was finishing. Fuel pump power. On and on. Uh, then I need to do red beacon on. There we go. So now, move to the engine start. Fuel pump 1 and 2. They are on anyway, I believe. Or is that that one? Oh, I don't know. There's too many of these. Um, I'm pretty sure that's on. And that's fine. APU. Run. I don't see a run. I guess it means on. And then after three seconds, start. Now, if we come here, there we go, there's the APU. Okay, so we have APU power. Which means I'm now going to switch. Let's just double check if we go to the electrics. APU generator is connected and on, so we should now be able to. Is that on or off? I can't work it out. I'm pretty sure when the lights are. It's a cold and dark cockpit, so when the lights are off, it's good means we click off the GPU. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now if I go to Ground Ops, we can remove the GPU and remove that equipment. Right, Ignition is on auto. Hydraulic pumps. Where are these hydraulic pumps? Here, they are in off. Packs are off. Engine bleed one on one and two off, but light off. Okay. APU bleed on, light on. I don't understand. Uh, let me hide this. ECS no. No, not that. I'm a little confused. I believe we have APU power. But it says here APU bleed light on. See, it's a bit confusing. Let's try it and see what happens. So, engine two. Start. Okay, that seems to be starting, so we obviously have APU bleed. Uh, something else that I've added is the... 
ba 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 FT Sim Sound Pack. So that is attached to this aircraft at the moment. That is very nice sounding. Okay, so that looks like it has now stabilized, so we'll go cover that up. Engine one. I have to say, this, I think I prefer this look to the 195, which I fly quite often. I don't know what it is, it just it feels nicer. So, that's engine 1 stabilised as well, so APU bleed can now go off. The APU can be, turn the APU generator off. We'll check the electrics. Okay, good. So, APU can now go off. And we can see here, APU power is dropping. Good. Uh, here. Alright. So, packs can now go on. Engine bleed 1 and 2. I think they're on. I guess they're on now. After start, so ground equipment removed, electrical panels set, APU as required, electric hydraulic pumps to auto, windshield heating as required. It is pretty chilly here. Um, current weather, wind 060 at 9 knots, visibility greater than 10 miles, clouds clear below 20,000, temperature 9, dew point 5, altimeter 1013, 29.91 inches. Yes. Right, uh, what do I need to do? I need to do something else. Where was it? Was it here? No, it's over there. So I need to set the pitch. Trim required, 5. Okay. Flaps. To 22, yep. Flight controls, so we'll do a flight control check. So, full left, full right, full up, full down, and we don't see any difference anywhere. Nice. Uh, taxi lights, so, taxi lights are on. So, I think everything here is okay. It's a dark cockpit and I don't see anything wrong. So I think we're good. Right. Let's get going then. start moving? No, we need a bit more power. Now, there is an option to turn on reflections and off again. I think that's on. I don't know. Okay, a bit more power by the looks of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fly this like a 195 and just hope to hell that it works. So we're entering the runway, which means strobe lights on, landing lights on, taxi lights off. OK, 
Okay, initial altitude is going to be directly to the maximum. So, I'm going to go to 34,000 directly. And we'll set alt. No, we won't. I'm hugging this line because I actually know that at the end I'm going to have to do a full turn. A really, really nice looking plane. I don't know, I, I, I've got a thing about regional jets. I really like them. Don't ask me why. There's no particular reason why I should like the regional jets over anything else, but I just do. Uh, right, TCAS. T A R A. Yep, there we go. Okay. So we're going to pull this turn now. So this is a. Uh, Quite a tight turn. You will have noticed we've just had to overrun the runway a little to do it as well. So, a bit more power, please. A bit more, apparently. We're a bit stuck on the gravel by the looks of it. Come on. I'm now basically a full throttle. Okay. So brakes. Wow. I do not know what happened there. We went flying backwards through the thing. Okay, speed. We need to set that speed to uh, 145 because our V2 is 130. So 145. Um, I guess I need to change. How do I change the source? How do I change the source to the FMC? Let's just find that quickly. And I'm sure it's on here. That's the range. I'm going to leave nice and low for now. Ah, FMS, there we go. Perfect. Right, so let's just check the checklist quickly. So, minimum fuel, yep, yeah, takeoff briefing, ice protection test, brake temperature checked, ECAS checked, transponder TARA, takeoff config checked. Is there a takeoff config button? No takeoff brakes. No takeoff brakes. What's wrong with the brakes? Do I have a brake temperature warning somewhere? How do I check the brake temperature? Brakes are on, yeah, okay. How do I check the brake temperature? There's something telling me what it is. Uh, uh. <gasps> Wow, I've never noticed anyone that. That, oh my god, that is so cool. I have to screenshot that. That is awesome. <laughs> I'm so easily pleased. 
Right, anyway, I can't find the brakes, whatever. Gust lock. Uh, how do we unlock the gust lock? How do I unlock the gust lock? Right, let me double check quickly and come back. Okay, so I just checked and uh, actually the gust lock is not pro properly modelled apparently. So that is us ready. Which means we can now get going. So, let's get the throttle up to around 50. And there we go. Full throttle. Airspeed alive. Come on. 80 knots. We're taking off no matter what. V1. Rotate. V2. Whoa! That was not good. Not good at all. Positive rate, gear up. Right. We're going to go for autopilot on. Then we're going to go for I'm going to go for a flight level change up if I can get the damn thing to point up. There you go. nav mode. Okay. And apparently auto throttle is by here. Is that what he said? Yes, if I check the FAQ, I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Uh, blah, hidden auto throttle. Just click on the top left screw, it will illuminate green if on. Okay. So we are climbing nicely. We should probably pull those flaps in though. Look at this, this is a good day. Good day for taking screenshots, I think. Right, back in the cockpit. Hmm. Why, oh why, 
Can I not see the plan? Okay, I'm going to put him into heading mode instead then, I think. And... Where, oh where, is... My barrow, there it is, standardize. And... Standardize. Okay. And I think if we go to the FMS... Uh, to the progress page and the flight plan... GH is the next point that we should be going for, apparently. Let's go... Direct to Urtak. And if we go into nav mode, he should now pick that up. There we go. He's got it. He's nailed it. Very, very nice. Looking good. Now, how are the speeds being managed? The speeds being ma managed, managed, managed by the system automatically. I guess so. Yeah, we've got speeds here already dialed in. And you can see the speed is increasing now that we've gone past 10,000, so that makes sense. Alright, landing lights off. And... Passenger signs off. Let's just double check. Cabin temperature, 20 degrees. Uh, I thought I saw something to do with pressure. Ah, here it is. Cabin altitude, 4,800. Okay. Oh, wow. Don't do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure on map, yes, we had different things. You can turn off the VORs. I'll leave TCAS on. TCAS is always useful. I'll leave the airports on as well, because why not? And weather doesn't seem to be working. I don't know what this is. Full plan, ground speed. I don't know what any of these things are, to be honest. They're pretty new to me. Well, we are just going to continue climbing. Climb up to 34,000 feet. So I guess there's nothing really to say. I will see you when we are closer to our actual descent point. See you in a bit. Okay then, ladies and gents. We are very close to our top of descent point now. Over the top of Canada, we are on our way to St. John's. So, let's have a quick look. We should start descending now, basically. So, set the altitude to 5,000. And then we'll go for a flight level change. But we're going to set this to flight level change 280. In fact, no we're not. We're going to set it to uh, vertical. How do I change the vertical speed? Uh, let's go in here. I'm sure the autopilot. Vertical speed, there we go. Minus 1800. There we go. So now we'll go down at minus 1800. No, <coughs> that one. There we go. With a target speed of 280. Interesting that it doesn't do both at the same time. It doesn't seem to be able to manage both. 
but that's not a big deal. So we are now descending thick and fast. Look at the... Look at this. What's that about? The, uh... Cold air for some reason. It's not coming from the engines by the looks of it. <coughs> so, we've got plenty of fuel. I'm not concerned about that. Let's dial this down. We can go to 20, I think. After this, we've got the next waypoint. It's about 46 miles away, I think. That's why the auto throttle is disconnected. So now he should try and maintain 280. Good. It's better. So you can see now. Hang on, hang on, mate. Should still be descending at 1800, thank you. Ah, okay. So he pitched up to get us down, to get us to the correct speed. That's not such a bad thing. So our 5,000 is based on... Close that one down. Picta. So Picta is 56 nautical miles away. It has a speed constraint of 210 and an altitude constraint of 5,000. So we need to make sure that we are good with those. Bring this one back up. And can I pop up both? I can. I can pop up both. We'll leave the terrain on for now. I don't think it's really necessary completely. But by the looks of it, we should be able to see St. John's soon. We're only 18 miles out from St. John's. Now let's do a quick weather check. Right. So, weather, wind 220 at 13 knots, gusting to 18, okay, visibility greater than 10 miles, clouds broken at 1500 feet, broken at 13100 feet, temperature 22, dew point 20, precipitation none, altimeter 1019, 30.09. Uh, now if I check the chart... Transition altitude is 18,000 feet. <coughs> um, and I just need to remind myself what that last number was. I think it was 30.09, right? 1019, 30.09, yeah. Cool. So we're not there yet, obviously. Now, if we go outside, St. John's is basically up over there somewhere bit too far in the distance at the moment by the looks of it. I haven't put a seatbelt sign on yet because it's just not necessary. Uh, but I think what we can do now is turn off the terrain. Uh, we're just descending. We'll have a look at the checklist as well. We should do. Uh, that was all done. Descent. Altimeter set. Not yet. ECAS checked. Yes. Windshield heating on. Yes. Approach briefing completed. Yep. Yeah, it's just me. Pressurization panel set. Okay, so I think the pressurization panel. Air conditioning pneumatics. Yep, okay, so the air conditioning panel is the one by here. Which means. Which means what? It means I should set the elevation to the runway. Or the airport at least. Uh, which is an airport elevation of 461. We'll set it to 500. So pressurization set, external lights on. Uh, we haven't passed 10,000 yet, so we don't need that. And pack signs, 
not set because we haven't passed 10,000. So we'll do both of those at 10,000. We will also change the decision height and all that jazz once we get closer. Now, are we going to be able to get down to Pigta in time? I don't think we are. But I was assured by the descent calculator we would be able to, so I think we're going to go now into flight level change mode. And for flight level change mode, I'm going to drop the throttle to idle. Which means we should now start dropping more quickly? Should. Why are we not? Oh, he is, but just very, very slowly. He's changing slowly. I'm used to the aircraft changing quite rapidly when you ask for that. Come on. Come on, buddy. Right, we're close to 18,000 now, so... We're in inches, which is good. We can change this to 30.09 as we cross the threshold. Okay. This is not working as I wanted. Let's go back here. Except that's 2400. There we go. And we're about to pass 1800. So the auto throttle should now start balancing with the plane, I hope. Right, let's sort this out. 30.09, and over here. Oh, it's uh, it matches on both. Okay. <clears throat> it's quite strange the way it's descending, actually. It's been told to go to a target of twenty-four hundred, but it's just refusing. And we're supposed to be at five thousand at Picta which is in 10 nautical miles. But now he's beginning to drop a little. It's, I don't know, he's just not paying attention to me. I guess there's something I'm doing wrong. Something really obvious. Uh, if I go to that one, no. It's one of the options up here, isn't it? Uh, VSO. We can see a picture. Yeah, we're not going to be at the right level at all. Okay, can we at least meet our approach level, which is 3,000? Can we do that, please? useless. It's supposed to be at 210 knots as well. Uh, 
Ah, I needed a second click. Oh, for goodness sake. Now he's descending rapidly. Well done. So yeah, I needed to click a second time. Odd. Wonder if that's like the real aircraft as well. Okay. So as we approach twelve, uh, ten thousand, we'll put it into here already. We're going to do two forty. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to do two ten actually. <coughs> But of course, that's only once we pass 10,000 feet. <coughs> We're not doing very well here. Tessox. From Tessox, we should be about 3,000 feet. We're still above 10,000. Tessox is not far away. Right. Target speed of 210. Let's get the... That's the speed brakes there. Pull them right out. Try and scrub off some speed quickly. Uh, okay, so landing lights. On. Wrong one. See if that sign's on. moment we're just far too high we can now close this though I think Still dropping like a stone. Looks like about five miles after Tessox we'll be down to our target. No, we won't. That's six miles after. Uh, which means it's going to be very tight as to whether we actually make it. And we're now starting to bob. Probably because we're doing something a little stupid here. Well, I am at least. There should be a runway. That is the runway there. Right, approach mode on. Glide slope is not going to be captured just yet. Not while we're this high. But we do have a couple of miles to capture it by the looks of it. And I need to get those speed brakes out again to get the checklist up. Flight attendants notified. Yep, passenger sign set, altimeter set, cross checked. Okay. Landing, landing gear down, flaps, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We know this one. And one of these should be autopilot disconnect, that one by the looks of it. Oh, wow, we might actually be able to capture the glide slope here. Close those. Glide slope is on standby. Okay. Ah. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Ladies and gents. Am I doing something a little stupid here? Where is radio? Here it is. Right. I am indeed. 110.3. Honestly, God knows how it managed to connect to that. We 
Okay, so nav1 is now 110.3. We'll put nav2 as well. And switch that over. Right. Uh, perf 3, so we've got our speeds here. Uh, I'll leave those down. Now, uh, what should we do? We should set this to nav ILS1. Course should be 285. Now, if we're in pause, okay, have we captured the glide slope there? We have. We're a little bit above the A little bit above the um, glide slope, so we're just going to start descending to do that. Hopefully, we'll start catching up with it very soon. Right, I'm going to open the spoilers, I'm going to slow us down to. One sixty. Go back here to Perth. Oh, and by the way, this is not the correct way to fly an ILS approach. It's really not the correct way to do anything in here. But okay, we're now below the glide slope. Interestingly, not sure how we were supposed to capture the glide slope. think Autopilot. where the hell is the runway? Oh. right there right we're going around then it, it appears right, current, current heading autopilot on current heading yes altitude 5,000, climb, 1, uh, speed of 240, yeah, because <clears throat> there was no way we were going to capture that, no way at all, whoa, auto, auto throttle on please, thank you. Right, so this time he does have the ILS by the looks of it. So we should be on a heading of 285. What heading are we on? 280. Oh. Here we go. And Apparently we only need to climb to 3,000, so we'll stop here at 4. Now, in the checklist, no, we don't have anything for... We don't have anything that we can use um, to tell us about the AP. I'm wondering what CPL is. It's okay, you know, I can land it manually. Oh, look at this. I've spent the entire flight and not even realised that we've got this. How stupid of me. Let me hide this a second. Look at this! I can't believe this was here the whole time. How did I... 
I must suppress something. Um, yeah, I must suppress something earlier when I got Avitap pop up. Wow, okay. Well, good to know it's there at least. Uh, okay, so. Turn heading mode off. It was 285, so we'll go to 195. Heading mode. There we go. We're bobbing up and down like crazy. So there's the runway down there. No, it's not. We're bobbing so much that I'm really struggling here to actually find the runway. It should be off to the side there. But I don't see it, or do I? Is that it over there? Oh my goodness. This wind is crazy. Really crazy. Okay. Now we'll turn again to 105. Which means we should now be parallel to the runway, or in a moment, we'll be parallel to the runway at least. So, altitude, 3000. Disarm the approach mode. So yes, altitude, 3000. You can do that as a speed descent. And we'll get down to 3000 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start extending the flaps. We'll go to flaps... Flaps 22, I think. So, if you can, I don't know how well you can see that, you can now. Uh, do, do, do. 250 for 9, 200 for 22. So I think if we go to 180, speed of 180. 2500. Now we're in speed mode. We'll let that wind down. We can go to flaps 9. And as we pass 200, we can go to flaps 22. Now, in the FAQ it actually says, why can't I connect to... Why does he have his yoke and I don't? Weird. Uh, why can't I move to flaps 18? Apparently that's because in the real aircraft they don't use it, they skip over it, so they do the exact same thing here. Right, those engines need to spool up a little. There we go, that's better. And we should now be able to see the airport and the runway. Yes, there we go. Luckily we have plenty of fuel left. It's become uh, 
a little bit too common now that I have to perform missed approach procedures. It's not good. I had to do one on the way into Greenland. Now I'm having to do one here. Here it was because I made a bit of a mess trying to get it to descend and couldn't work out why it wasn't descending. But yeah, it wasn't very good before either. So by EPFAG, we need to be at 1500 feet. So I think we could be a little bit cheeky here. And we can go to 1500 feet. We can do a flight level change to descend to that. And then we can start a turn. So I won't arm the approach mode yet. We'll turn to turn to base and then we'll do it. Honestly, it's a really beautiful plane. So we're doing this at quite a slow descent by the looks of it. Which is fine, it's not a big deal. Okay, so turn heading mode off, and now we need to go to a heading of 15. So, heading mode. Oh, something a little bit weird. And that, so that is reflections on. Okay, I think the reflections look fine. Lots of people were complaining about it, but I think it looks nice. So we are now almost there, and we're at 1,500 feet, which means we can kind of sneak into the glide slope without having to be there correctly. <coughs> No idea what that was. I pressed CPL and he just started doing his own thing. Co pilot or something? I honestly don't know. But that was my fault for messing around a little. Right. Let's turn to a heading of 285. As long as we're not at 285, we should be fine. So let's go 300. He Heading and approach mode armed as well. No nope, heading for now, then. And now we've shot past it. We've shot past the localizer. Right, let's get the speed down. Flat 45, approach speed is going to be 128. So let's get that down to 128. Turn, turn, my girl. Right. Gear down. Flaps to 45 and approach mode armed. Oh, come on. So we are now slow enough. That's a good thing. We should very soon capture the glide slope, I hope. At least the localizer. 
We are basically spot on for the glide slope, but not yet for the localizer. Ah, we've got the localizer, good. And we've got the glide slope. Whoop, whoop! We're coming in. Awesome. So, descending nicely. <coughs> Wind 16. Ooh. Let's just do a quick double check. The altimeter is still the same. It's now 30.08. and there's a hell of a lot of wind shear down here. Like a seriously big amount. Uh, minimum decision height for ILS is 200. So 649 feet, 200 above ground. So I think now it's my turn. Autopilot. Okay. Four hundred. Wow. This thing is incredibly responsive to touch. Come on. Three hundred. Okay. Okay. I can do this. This is really, really bad. Minimums. Continue. Okay. Okay, good. Come on. You'll do it. You'll do it. You'll get down. You will. Come on. Reverses are green. Oh, reverse idle. And reverses cut. Whew! That was a really, really bad. Really, really, really bad landing. This looks like there's a parking space here. Why on earth would there be a parking space here? But we should slow down. We are travelling far too quickly. Get those flaps up. One hell of a slope here. Let's disable the flight director and we'll get the APU started. going a bit too fast again but then again we are on the runway at the moment so it's not such a big deal to be going a little fast now where should we actually be going somewhere over there by the looks of it yeah we're bombing it down here this is a high speed taxi at the moment I'm just waiting for a taxi turn off to be honest. There's got to be one around here somewhere. 
stop swerving. It's my joystick. I'm not using my joystick, I'm using uh, pedals. But the joystick is still set up to yaw. And it does like to make a mess of doing that. Okay, so... I guess we could go down there. But we'll just park up over here. Because this isn't a commercial flight, not really. So I think we can just go and park in front of that hangar. Yeah, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Put the parking brakes on. Get the lights off, the ones that should have been off already. Strobes off as well. And... The engine's cut. Just wait for speed to go down a little. Hide that again now. There we go. Red beacon light off. Okay. We are landed. Pretty awful landing, to be honest, but let's go and have a quick look at the landing in action. Look at how much we've shaken. This is obviously on super speed at the moment, but even still. Missed the touchdown zone by a mile as well. Right. This is me attempting to control it. So that was the float. At some point along here, I didn't say it to you because I was focusing on trying to land, but I did realise at some point that uh, because auto throttle was still on, I wasn't getting any any cutting of the throttle. And then when I did turn auto throttle off, it still wouldn't cut. It wasn't that bad a landing, actually. I'm quite impressed. I thought it was much, much worse than that. What I would like, as always, I need a thumbnail. I think I'm going to go with a thumbnail just as we touch down. Maybe a little bit further back where the front wheel is higher. Yeah. That'll do! Awesome! Right, so, thank you very, very much for joining me, ladies and gents. Next time we're going to be flying down to, I believe... Yes, that's right, we're going to be flying to K-O-R-D, which uh, is Chicago, I think. Yes, it is, Chicago O'Hare. That's where we'll be going next time. So, thank you very much for joining me. And I will see you again very soon. Goodbye.